All right, so thank you uh, very much for this uh, introduction. Uh, yes, we will talk today about um, chronology uh, statements. Um, so how users of the NodeGoat platform are able to um, store, uh, represent, um, and use uh, complex date statements, uh, especially when dealing with uncertain times or uncertain dates. Um, while we are on this uh, subject, uh, we present also a short uh, timeline of uh, NodeGoat. So this year, uh, the company behind NodeGoat uh, exists uh, 10 years. Um, in 2013, we uh, launched uh, NodeGoat as a research platform, uh, a collaborative research platform for uh, historical network um, analysis, uh, where researchers uh, model their data um, and do various uh, kinds of um, tasks, uh, importing, exporting, uh, filtering, um, visualizations, um, multiple different tasks in one environment. Um, so that was in 2013. Um, and since that, we have uh, continuously been working on the platform. So in 2015, uh, we added uh, a first version of a linked data connectivity that allows you to connect to linked data resources um, and store the returned URIs in your um, environment. So to really make your data uh, sustainable um, and open for um, uh, collaboration. So to foster the uh, interoperability of your data. Um, later, we also ad entered, uh, created public um, interfaces. Uh, in 2016, the API uh, became available uh, that also allowed for publishing uh, JSON-LD. Uh, so your data could really be part of the linked data uh, framework. Uh, we created um, reversals to create advanced processes on your data. Um, and in 2018, uh, we also created network analytical features. So you can run uh, a between a centrality calculation from within your NodeGoat um, environment. In 2019, we stored or we allowed for the storage of GeoJSON. Um, and then um, same year, uh, we also developed the chronology statement uh, functionality. So already um, two years ago, we wanted to present it last year um, during conference, which uh, takes place uh, this year. Um, and after that, we, uh, as we always do, continue uh, to develop uh, new features. So we worked on uh, dynamic data ingestion processes. We recently run a workshop series on that um, and also data reconciliation. So you can map vocabularies within your environment. Um, and we already have a new uh, functionalities planned for uh, later this year, um, as you can see. Um, so NodeGoat is uh, used by many researchers. So we have a lot of researchers using NodeGoat uh, on NodeGoat.net. And we work for many research institutes, mainly universities uh, all over the world, uh, where we provide services uh, around NodeGoat. So uh, we uh, create installations locally um, and also provide them with training uh, workshops and um, maintenance uh, services. Um, so this is a short overview of some examples. Um, please go to notegoat.net um, to explore other uh, use cases. So NoteGoat um, as a tool really uh, helps researchers to create interoperable data. Uh, researchers can use existing data models um, as a basis for their model in NoteGoat, uh, but they can also uh, map uh, their model to external ontologies when they publish their data as JSON-LD. Um, and they also are able to link to these external uh, linked data resources, either to st store a returned URIs um, or to really connect to these linked data resources um, and to ingest the data that is returned by them to really make use of the linked data framework um, as it exists right now. Moreover, the data um, can be exported in um, platform agnostic uh, formats uh, like a CSV uh, and via the API, uh, you're able to uh, communicate from, with any programming language uh, with your uh, data in NodeCode. 
So as we said, we um, created the jail GeoJSON uh, feature in NodeGoat uh, to allow scholars to store these complex borders, especially for historical boundaries. This is a very useful feature for historians, so they can uh, align the boundaries uh, with the time frame of their data set. Uh, so it's really a useful uh, feature and they can use it for uh, multiple complex shapes like uh, polygons, multi-polygons, but also just uh, lines. Um, and just as the same uh, for spatial statements, uh, complex statements are also needed for uh, the uh, temporality um, that is used by researchers. And as we all know, uh, historians have an almost an endless need to express temporal uncertainty, um, but they really lack a common vocabulary for this. So there's a lot of subjectivity involved uh, when historians talk about around a certain time, approximately, or just use uh, question marks. So there's, there's a lot of uh, yeah, implicitly in these statements. Um, then the Repertorium Academicum Germanicum um, at the University of Bern commissioned us to think about how can we create a date-time format in NoteCo that could allow for more complex date statements, especially when we deal with fake dates. Um, we started first to look at the EDTF standard, uh, which already has been mentioned uh, in the paper before, um, but there we saw some shortcomings uh, that made it not really suitable for our needs. Um, so there is not really a function in the EDTF standard to use a relational date statements to say this happened before that event, uh, which was really a key element that we were looking for. Um, moreover, the groupings or the intervals are set. So if you want to define a specific date scheme for a summer semester in a specific region, uh, that's uh, not really doable. Um, and it's all, a lot of data is really condensed in a very uh, yeah, short statement, which might be well suited for representation, but less uh, for computation. Um, and although there are a lot of parsers around for EDTF, it's not really that um, suitable for um, computational um, efforts. So that's why we thought, okay, let's uh, create something that's really suited for the use case in NodeCode, uh, where we need an uh, actionable dates, uh, but also we want to allow historians to uh, define a very broad range of possibilities um, that are really uh, human and computational interpretable. Um, so it really covers both spheres of the spectrum uh, that we're that we're looking at. So we created chronology statements um, that we represent in the chrono-json format um, and those align with the uh, Allen operators to allow for uh, computational efficient uh, processes. We allow historians to define their own offset with an offset unit um, and we have this temporal relationality. Uh, we will later look at some examples but that really allows you to say this statement happened five years before uh, that statement. So that's really a key feature. So when we look at the basic ID behind this functionality, uh, we see that um, any date statement um, can be defined as a period with a date start and the date end. Um, and there you can make an additional statement that a date start uh, where you can say, this happened before or before that date, um, this uh, statement begins, the same for the date end. But more importantly, you can also cut this up so we can look at the date start as two positions. So when did the date start moment commence and when did the date end moment um, happen? And there you can also produce a range. So your period is then the time frame between the period of the date start and the period of the date end. And this then allows you to be very granular in the way that you define your periods. When you work with, with historical sources, you know that oftentimes uh, cycles like 
um, religious days or um, months or uh, seasons or semesters are mentioned, these can then be added to your statement as a custom cycle. So you can define in NodeGoat uh, these cycles as well. And these can also be used to define uh, the two elements of the date start and the two elements of the date end um, points. So there you can also use these cycles as well as the references. So the references can be used on these four moments in your uh, date statement uh, that these four date statements can all be relational to allow for a, uh, a high level of granularity in your statement. So as an example, um, we could look at a um, moment of immatriculation uh, where you could say this immatriculation happened at a summer semester. Um, it happened uh, two months after the spring or in the spring, two months after Erasmus graduation, uh, one month before uh, in the winter of 1500. And then it ended uh, one year after the winter semester in 1504 and two years before in the spring uh, of Luther's immatriculation. So there you see uh, that you, uh, based on uh, little knowledge, can construct a date statement by relying on uh, relational elements. In NodeGoat, this is then uh, fitted into an interface. And this interface is uh, completely dynamic so driven by the uh, decisions of the researcher. So we don't need to create this interface for every project, but it's existing there to be used by any researcher in any node code project. So this allows them then to immediately enrich their data model, uh, their data with these um, statements. How we're doing on time, uh, Georg? You are uh, overdrawing by this moment. Okay, so let me just finish this uh, quickly to show you an example of how this is used in NodeCode. So when we log in to NodeCode, um, when we look at letters, for example, uh, you will see uh, that you can define a date just as any other date. Uh, but here we can see that the uh, date is then defined as a chronology statement where the letter, which happens quite often, um, is not given a date because it's unknown, but you know it was sent between two other letters. So now you can position this letter saying five days after um, the receiving of this letter um, and five days before the other letter. And then you get a uh, period which is then used within note code to show um, the existence of the letter uh, just as it existed in this period. Um, so it's immediately part of the complete uh, database. Um, and the notation then uh, looks like this, where we have the sub-object with the date statement, um, where the chrono.json data is shown like this. And via the create button, you're then able to define this statement as you go. So you're really able to uh, define this by yourself based on your own uh, decisions. Um, and just for this simple um, example, you can also do this much more complex uh, where you make a date statement uh, not based on another letter, but also on the biography of a person. So state that this letter was sent after a person moved to a specific university. So it's a really explicit, but also transparent storage and representation functionality of these fake dates. So you don't need to rely on this subjective around of approximately. You can really be precise on the vagueness that you want to use. And it's actionable by design. So these are computed into time ranges immediately available in your environment. And it can also be used for filtering purposes. So um, if there will be a question on this filter, we're happy to show that uh, how that works.